apply. This um, is, go ahead. You're set. Everybody? All right, this yep. is the Clifty Library District um, Board of Trustees working session today and I'm calling this meeting to order. And Anne, would you please or um, perform roll call? Sure. Um, Kendra Adams. Here. Brian Lampy. Here. Ron Clark. Here. Rochelle Brodsky. Here. Frank Basler. Here. Scott Carpentier. Present. Bill Garcia, our attorney. Here. <laughs> and then we have Bud Hunt, Casey Lanzinger Pierce, and Katie Meserly, and Ann Kling as staff. All right, thank you, Ann. Um, does anyone have any questions about the review of the agenda? All right, with that being the case, we'll go on to shared space exploration options and I will hand it over to Katie. All right, can everyone see my screen? You should see the facilities planning logo. Yes. yes. Awesome. We'll dig right in. Well, for those of you in the audience, just want to recap where we're at. So with all of our work, we are working to fulfill our mission, which is to cultivate curiosity, enlighten the mind and strengthen the community. This year is part of our work in this F, uh, in the, the planning effort area. We also added a vision statement. We aspire to be a launching point for discovery creating innovative and adaptive spaces where everyone can explore, imagine, create, and learn on the path of lifelong learning to improve ourselves and our communities. Uh, we do this by focusing in three main areas, uh, early literacy, building connections, and inspiring lifelong learning. Specifically, our work today and over the last few months has been working towards the development of a short and long-term facilities plan uh, for the entire district. And we're working to evaluate six different space options or scope areas. And these scope areas were outlined in the strategic plan and requested by our community. Um, and just to frame our mindset today, um, when we asked our community, what one thing would you change or improve as part of our strategic plan feedback process, the number one uh, theme was space, the second being materials, the third being programs, the latter two uh, greatly influence space. So space is a hot topic and uh, that feedback plays greatly into what path forward we choose for the immediate and long-term facilities. As part of this process, we also identified and our community helped us to identify specific needs and challenges. Um, we broke those into seven key areas and then prioritized them as following. Um, the first being a defined and expanded children's area. The second being more programming spaces. Third, space for materials adequate staff workspace, collaboration spaces, both for staff and community members, expanded quiet areas, and increased storage. The six exploration options that we've been working um, through and will culminate tonight, uh, the first being uh, looking at options for our existing building, um, the second being building new space, I'm sorry about my dog in the background. Uh, the third being opportunities to rent, lease, or buy existing properties. Opportunities to share space with other organizations or governmental entities. Um, what options are available in terms of um, housing our staff at other offsite locations. And then last but not least, uh, what opportunities may exist in partnering with area developers. So, like I mentioned, tonight we put a bow on our exploration options, and you can see where we're at in the calendar. We did alter our project plan just a smidge in reviewing our um, information uh, for the financial projections and what funding options are. We decided to move that to next week. So next week we'll focus on financials and recapping um, tonight we will focus on the remaining exploration options. 
which I'll go into detail in a little bit uh, in an upcoming slide. Um, in terms of the long range planning committee, uh, we are still meeting on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. every week. Uh, we're currently undergoing one-on-one -on -one meetings with the board of trustees to really dive into um, our topic of vision for the district's facilities that we touched on last work session or last meeting. Um, and then uh, after we kind of put a bow on um, all of our discussions with next week's work sessions, we'll get into making the final recommendations and or, fully digging into the development of a draft of the report. So lots of activity, lots of work, and it's now starting to all come together. And um, we're getting close to the end zone there, guys. Yay. <laughs> exactly. Okay, I'm the only enthusiastic one. <laughs> do I need to make you all do the wave or something? Like get, get really excited. Ryan, don't, don't look so serious. <laughs> This is a big deal. We need to celebrate. <laughs> Tonight, we are going to be discussing and evaluating shared space, developer partnerships, our existing building opportunities, and revisiting building one large facility. We'll also review some comparable libraries. So in digging into the shared space, which is scope number four, um, we began uh, this exploration area by outreaching to a variety of partner agencies and organizations within our um, service area. And so you can see all of them listed here. Um, we had some great conversations. Not only did we share uh, what we're setting out to do about our process, our plan in general, um, we also began conversations um, with how we could work together in terms of facilities, what these other organizations needs are, what our needs are, and if there were any joint opportunities. Um, the results of that, number one, you know, I think the biggest uh, win is that we open lines of communication uh, for the future. Um, specifically, there were some uh, several great opportunities that resulted um, from kind of this shared space mentality. Um, we had a proposal from the town of Severance that we uh, walked through on December 3rd for a new build opportunity. Um, we had discussions with the town of Windsor and Windsor Severance Fire Rescue uh, about a potential shared administrative space. Um, particularly, we visited the Diamond Valley Warehouse um, that we shared on January 14th. Um, we're still having ongoing discussions about potential opportunities that may or may not exist with the UC Health building, um, as well as um, we kind of left the door open to uh, opportunities that may arise in the future as they come about. Um, so we have, I believe we have a fairly good understanding of what each other's needs are. And so as things come available, we'll revisit those conversations. Um, in addition, specifically with the town of Windsor, um, we have begun conversations. If you remember one of the um, specific things that we wanted to dig into in our scope was to uh, examine the feasibility of a potential cultural hub. And so this is actually a um, uh, a part of the town of Windsor's strategic plan. And so we've been in conversations with their staff about what this could look like. Um, very preliminary. Um, they're beginning to embark on the process uh, here shortly in, in full force. And so they uh, would like us to be at the table um, once the conversations really get underway. So that's forthcoming. Um, very, I would guess long-term um, conversations, um, but one to note in our plan. So nothing to really dig into and evaluate at this time, but continuing to have the dialogue with all of those entities. Any questions or feedback on um, the shared space opportunities? I just had a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, so when you say that, um, on the cultural center, we're not talking 
one to two years with the town that they're a little bit behind that schedule. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and okay. speaking with Eric Lucas, it's likely something more in the five plus range. Um, but again, the, the conversations are so very preliminary. Um, you know, it's just, there's an, an interest on our side to be a part of that cultural conversation. Um, that's part of the town of Windsor strategic plan. Um, but defining what that means, there's a whole lot of work to do, but we're at the table, we're talking about it. And so it's a great start. No, oh, great. That's, I just wanted to get, make sure my understanding of their timeline was yeah. accurate. So thank mm -hmm. you for clearing that up. Thank you, Katie. Any other questions? All right, well, digging into developer partnerships, which is scope item number six. Um, so as part of our work in this area, we uh, released a request for expression of interest. Um, we posted that on October 30th and we did not receive any response from that posting. Um, we did complete some indirect outreach through our brokers, let them know we were interested in this area and if they had um, any developers that they've worked with um, or were aware of any developers that would be interested in, in a partnership um, to connect us. We specifically had direct outreach where we um, tried to engage in conversation um, with a variety of uh, uh, local entities that we were aware of um, and were able to have uh, several meetings um, in this area. And uh, talks continue, conversations continue, but this is just up to this date. Um, and the results were, uh, we were able to sit down with Chris Rock. We presented the East Point proposal on January 14th. Um, and then Scott, our Town of Windsor liaison, um, also uh, presented the flame proposal in Severance, which we shared on January 14th. Any questions on the developer partnership work? Other than Katie, I left you a message and you're aware of it that um, I did talk to Martin and he is going to be returning um, some information to me about opportunities of possibly doing something similar to Council Tree. Um, I don't know if that's anything in the immediate future or if it's again a long race. He asked me timeline and I said 10 years. And so, but I have not received anything on that. I did want to give, share that information because I just got it, what, 20 minutes ago? Uh, yes. Yeah. So. Thanks for that update. All right, digging into our existing building, we've already shared in the past um, a proposal from Ratio uh, in how to basically renovate our current space. Um, but now we're looking into the feasibility of upward and outward expansion. So um, this is under scope area one. Um, obviously you all know the Windsor Severance Library. Uh, but we asked Ratio um, Dennis Humphreys uh, to examine the feasibility of adding a second floor um, because in the past uh, we had always been told that that wasn't um, advantageous uh, or really feasible to some degree because of the structural nature of the building. Um, but we wanted to revisit that to make sure that that was still the case. And so um, Dennis reviewed construction documents and the current town of Windsor code. And um, his letter is included in the packet. So you can read that in full. Um, but essentially he broke it into three areas of consideration, um, the structural capacity, which uh, he states in the letter that the building was never considered to accommodate a second floor. So it would, if we were to add a second floor, it would require re-engineering to support that load. Um, zoning, um, if we were to add a second floor and in his estimates, he um, broke that to be about 15,000 square feet. So not the exact lower level footprint, but close. Um, it would require at least 30 more parking spaces to meet town code. However, in their experience um, in working with public libraries, they would recommend double the amount of parking spaces um, in order to uh, uh, 
meet that uh, requirement of parking spaces, we would need to acquire additional land um, to be able to make that possible. Um, and then last but not least in the area of disruption, um, because of the extensive renovation that would need to happen to um, address the structural capacity issues um, to add a second floor, the library would be closed for an extended period of time. Uh, and he wrote a summary conclusion and you, you can read it in full here, but um, while it's physically possible, um, he believes that it's not financially advantageous, um, nor would he recommend that be likely the most appropriate solution to meet our needs. Um, again, that letter is included in your work session packet, so feel free to read that in more detail. And if you have any questions, let us know and we'll be happy to get more answers from Dennis. So if you should so choose. Uh, so in looking at the cost, this is a real big question mark proposal um, because it would require um, some extensive investigation and um, some engineering analysis um, that the structural needs are really what adds that big question mark. Um, additionally, we would uh, need to acquire land to accommodate the parking requirements. Um, and that's also a big question mark, which we'll dig into in the next proposal here. Um, and then another consideration would, would, would be that we would need to add additional staffing to be able to appropriately monitor um, the second floor um, and keep that a safe space. All right. Let me pull up the worksheet to review. It's included in your packet. Copy and paste. All right. We've already shared the short and long-term costs. Um, the big consideration is the service impact um, because uh, given that this is our only location at this time, um, closing the library while they complete the structural components um, would have serious implications for our continu continuity of service. Um, once it was reopened after the structural components would be complete, um, there would be continued disruptions as a result of construction. There's really, because they would be working on the floor above, there would be no real way to contain that very well. So just a consideration. Um, already mentioned the additional staffing requirements. Um, uh, one thing to consider is that when the library would be shut down, um, it is highly likely that staff would have to be furloughed. However, this increased amount of space would um, potentially allow for more staff workspaces, which we need. So pros, um, we would uh, be able to expand the building approximately 12 to 15,000 square feet. Um, cons, um, it would require a closure. Like we mentioned, the existing building was not designed to accommodate a second floor, so we need some additional structural capacity, which means more money. Um, we would need to uh, expand our parking lot, which would require um, uh, acquisition of land. Um, uh, Dennis mentions in his letter that one of the considerations is we would um, probably need to have a fire suppression system. Um, as well as uh, either uh, egress stairwells, elevator, et cetera, which would reduce usable square footage on the first floor. Um, and then overall, a call on that ratio in their expert opinion believes that this is not a financially advantageous um, direction to head. In terms of scalability, uh, adding a second floor would uh, basically max out our, uh, our capacity according to town code, which um, current zoning restricts uh, the maximum height of buildings to two stories and or 35 feet. Um, 
This solution would allow us to serve more residents and, uh, and fulfill our vision and mission at a larger scale. Um, and it would just in general address all of those needs because we would be allowing for more capacity that we've identified. Um, there are a few questions which I'll dig into some preliminary answers after our next proposal share. Um, but would the Willard RE4 School District be interested in selling us land for that additional parking? What are the implications of, of that acquisition and for the school and for us? Um, and is there enough adjacent land to accommodate the additional parking requirements um, based on the configuration of our neighbor's properties? Any questions on the worksheet? I have a question, Katie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, as I understand it, it has not been determined whether or not the president structure will hold a second floor. Is that correct? Um, it will not hold a second floor based on its current engineering, according to the construction documents reviewed by Dennis. So we would have to add additional structural capacity on the first floor in, able, in order to support the load of a second floor. Does that make sense? It does, I didn't know that, but that makes okay. sense. This seems yeah. to me, <clears throat> we're taking a lot of time and energy in evaluating and considering something which in my mind does not seem to be feasible at all. Well, that's what we're, that's what this process is setting out to do is to look at all the options that our community put before us to revisit and determine, you know, reinvestigate or um, investigate for the first time what is feasible and what is not. And according to um, Horatio, it is physically possible but not recommended. Any other questions? All right. So we're going to complete our ranking sheet. Give me just one second and I will shoot this in the chat. And Bud, would you mind uh, if I can get back to my chat? There. Uh, sharing it out via email to those that Not at all. can't access the chat on their device. I will email that to board members present. All right. I will give you approximately three minutes or so to complete the ranking evaluation form and um, give me a wave, shoot me a chat, give me a shout to indicate when you're done.
All right, check it in. How are we doing, folks? Getting there. Okay, we'll give you a few more minutes. Okay, submitted. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Anyone else need any more time? I think I saw movements, signs of life from each one of you. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna keep moving. All right. Next, we're going to revisit the conversation of outward expansion, which is also under scope item number one. So just another beauty shot of the exterior of our building to get our minds in the right head space. Uh, an aerial view of our property, you can see here's our building and uh, Mountain View School is our neighbor and property owner of the land here. One thing to consider is right now, our bound, the boundaries of our property are landlocked basically by um, the school uh, entrance loop. So just something to keep in mind and we'll be talking about here shortly um, with some of the options that are going to be presented. So um, our goal in this area was to revisit conversations with the Weldary Forest School District. Um, great news was that they were open to having the conversation. So when? Uh, so they asked, you know, well, what are you thinking? And I said, well, we'll put some pen to paper. And uh, Dennis from Ratio was so very wonderful and completed some high level conceptual sketches. Again, these are what I'll about, I'm about to share are extremely high level, um, but gave us some idea of how we could expand um, outwardly, which would, uh, which would require purchasing some land and adjusting that school entrance loop, um, which I'll dig into in just a little bit. In addition, as we thought about um, this particular area of outward expansion, a question came up of, well, maybe uh, we could uh, relieve some of the pressure in the staff spaces by purchasing a modular and um, either seeking permission or purchasing land from the school district to accommodate that modular. Um, so we obtained some estimates, preliminary estimates from Saunders Heath, who um, they're uh, the company that has helped the school district acquire their modulars just for perspective. Um, so those modulars um, would be envisioned to house staff in um, a facility near our third street location. Um, like I mentioned, uh, we don't have the land to accommodate a modular, so we would either need to obtain permission or purchase land for the placement of these modulars. Uh, we uh, obtained a quote uh, for a 48 by 60 modular, which is just under 3,000 square feet. Um, that was utilizing the numbers from Humphreys Pulley on uh, essentially, I'm sorry, ratio on um, taking those 10 staff members out of the building to accommodate more public space. Um, for a modular of that size, um, for the modular itself, as well as the site work to complete the project, um, you're looking at $765,000. Um, it was the opinion of the a uh, long range planning committee that that was a hefty price tag and that doesn't even include um, anything to do with where we would place it. Um, and so we did not complete a worksheet for this option because it was not one identified by our community and we did not feel that it was uh, a financially um, sound path to continue on but just wanted to make you aware that we did look into that and what that price tag would be should you ever be wondering or get that question from a community member. 
back to outward expansion. Um, so in terms of expanding our building, um, the building itself, not just adding on a modular, um, like I mentioned, we obtain high level conceptual sketches from ratio to help enable those conversations um, with the school district. Uh, the first option that I'll be sharing with you tonight is a single level expansion. So not adding a second story, but just popping off the sides. Um, the second option would be uh, a, an outward expansion that would be two stories. So it wouldn't um, require a mod remodifying or modifying um, the existing building in terms of its structural integrity, but the addition itself would have two floors, if that makes sense. So you can see, again, these are very high level conceptual. Um, you can see the first option. Um, and in both of these options, uh, the square footage of the library is essentially doubled. In this option, everything is um, contained all on one floor. So you can see that basically it pops out in what direction is that north? Yes, it'd go north and a little bit west. Um, you'd also need to expand the parking lot. So we would need to purchase additional land from the school district, um, basically on these sides, which would require a rerouting of the loop. The second option would be to complete that two-story addition, um, basically just to the north. Again, doubling our square footage, so we would need to expand our parking lot. Um, both of these options would require additional purchase of land from the school district. So in looking at our worksheet, so I'll get this in. And just running some rough numbers on for construction costs. Um, if you remember back, we pulled out averages um, for library construction costs for um, new construction as well as renovation. So using that average for new construction, that 388 per square feet um, or per square foot um, for doubling our square footage, uh, basically a 17,000 square foot addition, you'd be looking at $6.6 .6 million in construction costs only. Um, that doesn't include FFNE, which is usually 20% of the total, total project budget. So um, just put that in perspective. And usually um, if you were to pursue an option with a two-story addition, um, that square footage cost would be uh, more. So um, it would require a reroute of the school entrance, um, which would likely have a cost um, involved. And I, the question would be if that would be something the school would be willing to pay for themselves or would um, we need to partner or pay for that. Um, also, we would need to acquire the land um, for both parking and um, the expansion itself. Uh, we would need to, uh, in the long term, add additional staff to be able to provide coverage for a second floor um, and or the floor space for the larger facility. Uh, in terms of service, uh, there would be continued disruption during construction, um, and there may or may not be um, partial or full closures depending upon what the defined scope of work would be for the addition project. Um, in terms of staffing impact, there definitely is the potential for increased staff workspaces. Um, like we mentioned, a, a second floor and larger service area would require additional staff to monitor and serve the public. Um, and um, if the library were to be shut down or certain areas would be shut down, um, staff may need to have alternate work sites during this time. So pros for this particular, particular area, 
Um, it would allow the existing building to be expanded to double. Um, it would double the amount of our parking spaces. Um, both options would require purchasing additional land and rerouting that school drive. Um, it would require a, a closure or highly likely. Um, if depending upon which option in the final scope, uh, especially adding a second floor, we might need a fire suppression system, which would be a, a, an additional cost. Um, also considerations with a second floor um, because of the ADA requirements um, uh, with an egress stairwell and or elevator space, it would reduce the square footage of usable space on the first floor. So, um, in terms of scalability, like mentioned in the previous worksheet, um, the current zoning is restricted to 35 feet and or two stories in the town of Windsor. So if we were to add a second floor, uh, an addition that had two floors, that would be the maximum amount of um, height space that we could obtain um, within current town code. Um, given our partners um, and the surround, their surrounding property, um, this solution would maximize the area capacity. So there really wouldn't be much of an opportunity to continue growing. It would be pretty much it. However, um, given that we double in size, uh, we would be able to serve more restaurants, or no, more restaurants, more residents. Um, obviously, I'm hungry, uh, and fulfill our vision and mission at a larger scale. Um, and we would uh, be able to likely uh, meet all of the needs that were suggested um, in the strategic plan. Uh, questions that would need to be addressed before pursuing this option. Um, would the school district be interested in selling the land for additional parking uh, or for the addition and for additional parking? If so, at what price? Um, we have had uh, preliminary conversations with the school district and they have um, conveyed that they want to be a good neighbor and want to be a good partner with us and continue that. Um, uh, essentially where things have been left is um, if we're so serious about pursuing this option, then they'll get serious about doing um, uh, a, an assessment on the value of that property. Um, so if that's something that we want to pursue, then um, they're willing to walk down that road with us. Uh, another big question would be uh, if the school district would be open to rerouting that school entrance. Um, and it, it appears that that answer is tentatively yes, given some of these high level drawings. Um, and uh, another question would be if it would be possible to stage this expansion over a period of years. So any questions on this worksheet? I have one, Katie. Um, do we know how much land we would need to acquire? Would it be, I mean, I'm roughly thinking it's going to have to be around about one and a half acres. I don't believe that we identified specifics in those high level conceptual drawings. Okay. I'm just looking, you know, just doing some math and I'm guessing if we did one and a half acres based on other numbers we've been quoted with in Windsor, even mm -hmm. if we went down a dollar a square foot or something, you're looking at about 700,000 if it's a, and I'm just being rough on that. Mm -hmm. But it, since we don't it have is an quite a, It is quite a large piece of land when you, you know, go on to the county website and um, get the dimensions on it. I'm not sure if it's an acre or even slightly more Kendra, but when you include both sides of the current building and behind the current building, there's quite a quite a bit of land there. So, would you think more towards the two th two acres, Anne? Of uh, I don't want to say. I mean, we can get back to you. We can get those. I'm just down. curious. I'm just kind of you know doing a ballpark because we priced two acres in the committee recently, and I don't think would be that high, bit, but. Um, even lower, it, it could be quite expensive if it's fair market value and we're not getting it. 
Well, it, it, since you're working with another government entity, um, there may be some transfer as opposed to them forcing you to go fair market. It depends on the school board, but I, I have to believe that they're going to make some kind of community assessment over that. Thank you, Frank. Appreciate that input. Thank you. That's all. Would you like me to add that as a question in this worksheet about how defining what the acreage at this point, or are we at that? I, I that think point? we're at the 30,000 feet on this. And if we come back to it, then um, it would be something I was just kind of um, playing devil's advocate maybe on what we could look at at cost. Um, you yeah. know, and just getting an idea in my head, just because that's what I do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just this price tag alone might uh, have some uh, influence in what direction or not this this proposal. And, I, and this, if this is one of the top three or whatever we decide as a committee to bring back, then we'll, we'll go for, forward would be my suggestion at this point. But I was just curious if you knew um, acreage amount. No, we played around with the assessor's tools a bit to try to gauge that, um, uh, but we did not come up with a definitive solution. And I, I don't believe Dennis, I don't believe Dennis included that in his information, Ann, right? He did not. Probably not. Okay. That, that, I was just kind of like, uh, what are we looking at? Oh, that's a fair question. I'm, I'm great topic, Kendra. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Have a good day. Thank you. All right. Next thing. All right, any questions or feedback? Okay, let's get to ranking. Let me drop the form in the chat. I'm gonna pull it up for our public to be able to see. I'll give you three minutes to start with and we'll go from there. Hey, bud, I need some advice on my Mac. I'm kind of locked to where I can't get into my chat or even Katie's screen. What's that command oh. thing? Uh, what I would do is uh, command tab will let you switch apps. And then uh, uh, maybe if, there you go. Are you going to email that to us? I am indeed. Okay, I'm still stuck here. Uh, Kendra, what you might try yeah. is if you've got your mouse, head up to the top left corner of your screen, look for the green, uh, the green full screen button and tap that, see if it'll tap you out at full screen. Should be noted, um, and, and forgive me if I said this and I didn't realize it, I've just been trying to remember to say it, <laughs> but you will see the results of these rankings um, uh, next week when we, when we do the recap. So just a heads up, like they'll come, it'll come full circle.
right, checking in. Anyone need more time? Dr. Clark, looks like you're still on your computer. Yep, still working. All right. Another minute or so. No problem. Okay. All right, how's everybody else doing? Need more time? See some thumbs up, see some duns. All right, moving onward. And last but not least in our exploration items is to revisit the conversation of a one large facility. This falls within scope item number two. And so these are architectural renderings of the proposed uh, one large facility on our Main Street property. This property is located off of Main Street in Windsor and Chimney Park Drive. So just off the east side of the lake there. So just to wrap our heads around this project, um, this particular project was slated to be one large 38,000 square foot library, um, essentially doubling the square footage of our current library in a more geographic location of the district. Um, it would be slated on a property of 5.76 acres of which the library district already owns. Um, it was purchased in 2016 as a result of a 2016 feasibility study that was completed in partnership with the DDA and town of Windsor. Uh, last evaluated, the costs were estimated at 23 million. That included the total, the total cost of the project, so construction, ff &E, and site developments. Um, other costs to consider would be the staffing, um, like our previous proposals, to properly monitor and serve the public in uh, uh, an increased footprint. So in looking at the worksheet, Um, as I mentioned, it, it, this scope would entail a 38,000 square foot library in the geographic center of the district. The approximate cost would be $23 million for the total project. In terms of service impacts, um, it would have the potential to create a larger facility that would serve the needs of a growing community, as well as include space for a centralized administrative hub and um, which would allow for a potential multi-branch system. Um, it would provide additional space indoor and outdoor for programming collections, meeting rooms, quiet spaces, staff workstations, and storage. Uh, when looking specifically at the staffing impacts, um, as mentioned, it would require additional staff members to serve the, the public in this larger space. Um, and it would provide uh, more staff work and collaboration spaces. Um, in terms of pros, it is located, it could be located in the center of the district. Um, the district already owns the enough property, more than enough property to house this facility. Um, the feasibility and site study has already been completed. It would potentially set the district up for success as a multi-branch system. It would provide increased space to meet the service demands of our community. Um, it would be connected to the trail system and Windsor Lake. Uh, this has a potential to add an additional asset to the library's financials. And it would increase our collection space, which would allow more time before materials are deaccessioned. Cons, it would highly likely um, require a mill levy uh, increase both for construction and ongoing staffing. Um, this facility proposal has gone before voters twice before and has failed. 
um, and the community has voiced concerns about the cost of the project, um, tax increases in general, and this specific location. In terms of scalability at full build out, um, there would be limited space on the site for future expansion. However, um, this facility would provide the infrastructure support to meet our vision and mission at a larger scale. Um, there were some specific areas that align with our three focus areas of fostering early literacy, building connections and inspiring lifelong learning. Um, and it would uh, meet all of the identified um, needs and or challenges that we're currently experiencing. A few questions to consider with this proposal. Um, would a scaled down version of this plan be feasible? And uh, would the town of Windsor be willing to waive fees, um, which would help reduce some of the site development costs? Any questions on this worksheet? Uh, Katie, I have one thought about the, one of the pros. One of the things that this would allow is we would be able to continue our current level of library services while mm -hmm. this being constructed. Excellent. I will add that to the service impacts and pros. Thank you. Any other suggested changes or feedback? Just one right. quick question, one quick one. So comparison of square footage between new build and the, the last um, building scenario that you showed us, how many square feet in the last one versus the new one? They would be approximately the same. Okay. So um, if uh, the expansion proposals would double the square footage of the library, we're at 17,000 square feet. So essentially right around 34,000, this would be a little larger at 38,000. Okay, thank you. And Anne, correct me if I'm wrong, the significant costs um, the site development, they were 4 million or 5 million, right? It was, the building itself was about 16 million. Um, and then everything else on top of that was site development and, you know, FFE, which wasn't that much of it. A lot of it was site development there. Um, part of that project, you there's a road on the maps that hadn't been developed yet. And so whoever builds first is responsible for putting in the road. Um, and that was part of the site development to connect. Um, I forget what the name of the street is. Uh, it might be Green Spire Drive. Uh, to connect Green Spire from where it currently ends all the way out to Main Street was part of, part that would have been required by the town of Windsor. And there is potential to recoup that cost should other partners. Uh, That's right. If the lot across would be sold, then you would recover you know, half of the costs from whoever purchased the lot on the other side, but you have to fr upfront the money. Yeah. And since we don't know if or when that would ever happen, that's why we want to make sure that the full consideration that it lays on that full 23 million price tag. Kendra? Yeah, um, I don't do commercial, so I have a question. Um, so is that, is, is is it a for sure that we that, that that money would be recouped or is it kind of like when you build a fence and you hope your backyard people ask you to share it with you? Usually there's an agreement. Part of that cost too was um, 300 and some 300,000 that we owed to the city of Windsor if we mm -hmm. developed there for costs that Windsor had up front had put up front when Green Spire was developed. Mm -hmm. And so you know part of that 23 million was, 300 and some thousand, 330,000 that we owe to the town of Windsor. I guess my question is though, we're not owners of the property. 
it's I'll have to look into that because I don't right. I'm not commercial. I right. don't know how you can make someone pay you for something. I think it's you know with you have an agreement with whoever owns that property who I mean, okay you know we looked into it at the time and it was yes you have to put the road in but you'll recover my, your cost. But my understanding at the time was that it was basically a third party arrangement with the town. So you pay the town to offset the development. Then when the next building or, or the next property owner moves in, they pay the town, the town reimburses you the difference. Okay, because that's where I was having the issue because of contractually how that works. And I'm like I said, I don't deal with that. I never have done anything like that. So thank I you. I see our attorney leaning in. Perhaps he has something to. I, I, I'm not familiar with this particular one, but I've done some of these in other communities. And what you, what you end up doing is having an agreement with the town where when there's development, it requires that payback and that's how you get the money. So I would assume that's either an annexation agreement or a development agreement. Okay, thank you. That, that helps me. All right, any other questions? Okay, moving right along. We will dig into the ranking. And let me throw that in the chat here. I'll pull it up for everyone to view at home. And I'll start the clock now. I don't have my email yet. It's coming. I, I just I just got the link. Give me a few seconds to allow the internet to do its thing. On it. I think I just got it. Yep. Okay, got the form. While we're all kind of working, I'll, I'll make one quick comment. Um, can everybody hear me? Am I unmuted? I can hear you. I, I like how this option has the potential to modernize what we do. I like how this pulls us out of a 
very hidden little neighborhood that has us locked in. My only concern is would the community feel the same way if the timing was different or and I don't know the answer to this or did we burn our bridge and the site is sour? I don't know. Anyone have thoughts or feelings around that? Say that again, uh, uh, Rochelle, I, I, I was busy doing my... Um, I like the option very much in that it's new and modern and much more um, visible than our tucked in little location. But I just wonder if this option would have been better received by the community at a different time when there wasn't the looming, the schools need to expand, we don't want to pay for this right now. If we, you know, uh, offer this to the community at a different time, would they be more receptive? Or was it more so just that piece of land that has everybody um, against it? I, I don't know if it was just a timing issue. It was more than that. And then I think I think it was a timing issue. I know there were people who did not like the, the land. I don't understand. To me, at the time, the land looked like a pretty good deal, pretty good place. But I think it was a timing issue. And I think we're still fighting that timing issue. But I also my eyes look at it now and I try, I don't go, I'm going to be honest. I live in Severance. I don't go down Main Street very much, but I will be, but what I, I'm just shocked at the traffic any time of day on Main Street anymore. And it, I would say that with it being a state highway, I don't know how they're ever going to loosen that up. They can take the trucks off of it. But I don't know. I don't have the magic wand. Of course, the entrance wouldn't be right off Main Street. It would be off, am I right? Hollis the Lake Road up this new Greenspire Drive. Right. You couldn't have an entrance on Main Street. It had to be on the other side of the building um, off of Greenspire. Well, that works for where I live. <laughs> I just, I, I don't know. I, I don't have an, a, I don't have the answer. I mean, it's, it's location wise, culturally, you know, where the hub is. I mean, you look at what the Windsor Mill is. What is that? Is someone drinking beer here? Cause I don't, peculiar, I don't know. <laughs> peculiar. peculiar ales. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know. I apologize to the owners. I just don't, I, I live in Severance. I know where Bruce's is. Um, so I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I think it's a great question, Rochelle, on whether it was just that or a combination. And it could have been a combination. I don't know. Uh, aren't, you guys, aren't you leaving out the big, the big one? And that was the cost of it. Was it really about the land at that time? Or was it the $30 million proposal? It, was it wasn't 30 million. It 20, was 23 million. 23 million. <laughs> and, I'm just saying, you know. That don't, don't increase it by 7 million when it well, wasn't, yeah. please. Another, another, um, year, another year, and, you know, I figure things cost more money now, you know. But, but uh, I think I, some I was, of it, as Rochelle said, you know, there had just been um, a big increase with the school district. And, you know, we were facing some issues with oil and gas and the oil and gas industry was quite upset at the time um, because there were some ballot measures. This was on the 2018. We also had a lot of resistance from a major developer in town, quite frankly. Um, I know people don't like to say that, but there was resistance 
from a major developer in town. And so, and we also did not have support from the towns of Severance or the towns of Windsor or the school district, quite frankly. Um, and those are not, you know, Anne Kling's opinions, those are facts. And so we had a lot of things against us at the time. Um, in addition to, it seemed like an outrageous cost to people. And that wasn't the building because the building itself was not exorbitant in price. It was the site development that was the problem. One of the, I think Rochelle, that your, your thoughts and concerns are very valid in that, you know, it is a matter of timing. And as we look at that area, I think we're not thinking short-term, we're thinking long-term. And the one thing that I've noticed is that this is the geographical center of our district. And in fact, it's the geographical center of this so-called metropolitan area that's going to be 200,000 people here in 20 years or so. And the one thing I think we can say for that area is that it is changing. And how it's gonna change and where it's gonna go, I don't think we really know, but I think most of the feeling I have is that the change is gonna be positive because of the things that are going on around that area and the fact of its location. So a lot of unknowns. I would agree, Dr. Clark, you weren't at the Rotary meeting today, but uh, the speaker was from uh, the Legends, Future Legends Park. And I did ask the question about roads because that is a big concern with 257 not being adequate and Main Street not being adequate. And she, uh, the person that was the speaker did say that they are well aware of that and they are working with CDOT. So, you know, things are going to change. That Future Legends Park has a hotel. It has a dome. Uh, they're already talking to the charter school about holding their high school graduation in the domed part of Future Legends. So a lot will change in that part of town that will have an impact on what's on Main Street in a very short time. Future Legends plans to have some things open by fall of 2021 and then there'll be more in 2022. And as those things change, so will that section of Windsor. I, I, I think uh, just to throw my two cents on the question, um, it was probably the wrong time. Uh, and, and the reason I say that is, is that the library and the dollar value, and I'll, I'll call it straight up the dollar value and people go, what else do I want? Um, and with the tremendous growth that's happening, there's pressure on schools. People want a bigger, better school for their kids right now where it got kids in modulars. And, you know, where do I want my tax dollar going? Um, and so there's pressure to raise taxes for schools. There's pressure to raise taxes for fire departments. Um, and I'm sure Windsor and I know for a fact Severance is under huge pressure to to deliver services, um, you know, build things. And I think every government wants to build something. And I, and I, I know everyone's got their pet project. And I think the large cost of the library coming in a, during these high growth phase right now um, did not have um, probably enough momentum to pull it off. It, it, I do vision a big library going in Windsor at some point, you know, 30 years down the road. I have no doubt that'll happen. But it, it's in this time frame while we're growing, while Severance is growing, while Windsor is growing, while Greeley's growing, everyone's looking for other services. You know, if it came down to more money to fix the congestion on 392, I'm over a library. Yeah, anything you just compare yourself to all the other government projects happening right now. It's not like Fort Collins where you're we're mostly stable. You know, Fort Collins I would say as a as a city is stable, and they can propose a vision project like that and pull it off. You know, get voters behind it and pull off that kind of a vision statement. And that that library, this large library, is a vision statement. Um, I think trying to pull off a vision statement when you have this much demand is very challenging politically. That's just my opinion, so. I would, I, I agree with you, Frank. And I would also jump in as big, a big difference between Fort Collins and Severance and Windsor and is 
Severance and Windsor have really embraced the Metro tax districts where a lot of Fort Collins is older. They have homeowners associations. Um, they don't have this huge tax. And when um, buyers are going in and buying a brand new home, their tax bill is already 1% annually of the value of their home because they are paying the Metro tax district. And honestly, a lot of buyers don't understand how that's gonna affect them in the long run. They get in those houses two, three years and then they start talking to someone and they're like, why are my taxes so high? And then they figure it out. Um, so I think that's another part um, issue that is part of our equation on trying to raise taxes. And I think that hits not only our district, but the school district and the fire district, anyone who's wanting to get those taxes at young couples who that tax bill goes into their monthly payment. Well, great discussion on that particular. But to be clear, I, I do envision this, you know, a large library happening in 30 years or so. Because a lot of that that tax bill is going to roll off. Those metro bills will roll off. Um, I think the community will stabilize, and the library, if it's in a good position, will be in that place to drop in that vision project. But it's getting from here to there. That's the trick, I think, in my opinion. And I and I and I I hope for less than thirty years. So. <laughs> As would I. Perfect. Well, overall, what did you think of the proposals presented tonight? Do you have any concerns? Which one do you like the best out of the information presented today? Remember, next week we'll be doing the recap, so we'll look at everything in entirety, but just today. Anything stand out to you besides what has already been shared? Ryan, I'm going to pick on you because I haven't heard from you tonight. You heard from me. I said something earlier. <laughs> uh, not enough. <laughs> not enough. <laughs> what are you thinking? What's on your mind? Um, well, I, well I, I don't know. Short term, I, I, I don't know. I'll, 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 you know what? You have me for an hour next Tuesday morning, so we'll talk then. All right, that's fair. I think it's probably not terribly controversial to say, I think the option I liked the least tonight was the first one because of the fact that I don't think the neighbors are gonna like having two stories. I don't think it gains us a whole lot. I hate the idea of having to close down completely on a construction project that wouldn't happen overnight. So me personally, I'm just wiping that first one, the second story off the list. And I'll jump on that with Rochelle too, because I, I think the costs are gonna be prohibitive. I don't like the idea of shutting the library down. And if we double the size of the library and we only double the size of the parking lot, we're still gonna be in the same parking issue where I already have with people parking on the street. I don't think it's enough to consider. I think the cost is too much and the results too small. I agree. As I've mentioned earlier, I think it's something we don't need to consider anymore. <clears throat> and area concerns, I'll jump on that if we're there, Katie. Do you want me to just keep going? Yeah, lay it all out. Area Andrew. concerns, and Frank was very helpful on that, but um, I'm because what we talked about yesterday, it was so long ago, um, that the school would have to incur a cost for what they would sell the land for. And that's why I said, let's stay at that 30,000 feet and not because I, until we're really serious about doing anything at our current site and we really find that, because I think we have, I guess what I'm saying is, I think we have better options that we've passed already discussed that I would hate to ask the school district who is already in budget constraints to go to any length at a commercial appraisal to find out what they would charge of us. And unless we're really ready to negotiate on that, I think 
we really need to consider and also be good neighbors. I think that's more than fair. Is there a particular proposal um, that we discussed today that you think will help solve our most pressing or current needs? Or is there a proposal that you think will resonate with the public the best? Too short term. I think too, from a short, I, I would have probably voted different after thinking that through probably a little bit. Okay. Just from a short term short-term standpoint. I can't read the mind of the public, but I don't think they'd like any of tonight's proposals. I, I'm not sure if people want to see us expanding on the same location. And just recently they said we don't like option number three. So tonight wouldn't make the public happy in my mind. I know we we owed it because we, again, we go back to our strategic plan that we did last year. And these were the questions that the public wanted us to answer. I think we have answered them. I think we've answered them clearly. I don't think they fit the vision that we've been working towards in the short term. And I think, um, but I think we've answered a lot of questions and I think we owed that to the people who bothered to come and talk to us in our strategic plan. And I think it's been a very fair um, time. I think it was well spent time, but I think we can say we dotted that I and crossed that T. Okay, I, I vote for Tinder for president. <laughs> oh wait, you already did. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so, hey, Kendra, so I'm not sure what you're saying. Are you saying so we've we've appeased the public here? We've done a survey, answered questions, and we're satisfied now that we've got their answers, and now we stop. Or no, I'm say saying on these three pro on these three options we reviewed today. These three options we reviewed today are all three options that the strategic plan said. Did you look on building up? Did you look at going into the school district and uh, a, a large library mm -hmm. and I'm saying yes we offered we looked at those agreeing with Rochelle that the large library would be nice but has been voted down um, and these other two really these other two unless there's not a better option and it doesn't end up where we've excluded all other options and this and uh, building onto this but then to our current space. But the strategic plan said that they didn't understand why that land was bought if we could build up or out. Did that answer your question, Scott? Yeah, so these, these tonight, unless I'm missing something, didn't really, didn't really incorporate the satellite options that we saw last meeting. No, completely different. This is saying, this no, is saying, should we do the best options of these options here tonight? Correct, sir. Yeah. We're just talking with regard to the three options we saw tonight. And then we take this one and we put it together with the other one, and then we come up with the best of the two, or what? Um, the the short, oh, Katie will bring us back the sheets next week. Katie, correct me if I'm wrong, of all of them that we've looked at as a whole through this whole process. Uh, not next week, on the 18th. And then, next huh? Next week is the 18th. Isn't next week. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what day it is. <laughs> the process for sure. So, uh, so we'll look at everything and how they ranked out through the whole board and you and your counterparts. Uh -huh. And we're going to look at that next week. But today we're only talking about these three proposals and how they fit into the, the, the strategic plan of what we were asked to look at. Right. Yeah, so next week we'll have an all encompassing discussion and kind of a summary. And then, um, then the long range planning committee will take the board feedback on, 
on all of the proposals and what we've discussed so far, and then look at basically um, making recommendations for um, how best to move forward, which the board will then have an opportunity to review a draft of that plan in March and provide feedback and input on the recommendations. Um, then we'll have a public input process and then it will go before the board for a final vote and approval. Does that make sense? All right. Well, last question. Any changes to the worksheets aside from Dr. Clark's addition of the continuity of service for the one large facility? Last call on feedback, questions, input on what you saw before we dig into comparables. Let's go, Katie. All right, we're almost done, guys. So one of the questions that was brought forth in the Long Range Planning Committee was um, uh, trying to get a sense of what other libraries at um, different population points are doing um, in terms of their facilities and, and their service levels. And so using um, the data from the state put together some comp for us to review. Um, so just first to put in our minds as we're thinking about this, our current population according to the, the, the state is um, 26,772. However, the North Range um, MPO believes that we exceeded 32,000 back in 2015. Um, using the MPO's data, um, they project that we will hit 92.5 by 2025, so in four short years. By 2030, we'll be at approximately 122,000. And then by 2045, we'll exceed 200,000. That's just in our service area, so our footprint. Um, it should be noted that um, the the legal service area is based on, on state demographer calculations. Um, once the 2020 census data has been updated, those will kind of recalculate. Right now it's based on a formula from the last census. So just to keep in mind of why there's some discrepancies between the MPO data and the, um, uh, and the state's data. So, so so I went through and in looking at the state statistics. Um, so Katie, one little extra piece of data, right around 2050, 2060, we're expected to run out of water. So our population will be capping out. So. Thanks for You're that. You're full of good um, news, aren't you, Frank? Just full uh, of good news. Uh, well, it's fact of life. There's only so much to drink around here, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's still quite the growth. That's still a huge <laughs> growth. Yeah. So I took a look at um, other libraries that and, and, uh, hit these kind of service area numbers. So that way we had a little perspective about what other folks are doing. Um, and they're arranged in that particular order from least to greatest in that time frame. Um, just a few things before we dig in. Um, just to clarify some of the state's definitions, um, you'll see a title called Central Library, um, and that Central Library is the location that is the center of operations um, and houses the principal collection. When they talk about branches under the state classification, it's part of a larger system, it's its own collection, own location, staff, and regular hours. And when I talk about square footage, that's the total of all indoor square footage for all of these outlets. So the central library and the branches combined. So starting off first with trying to get close to that, um, some of our 2025, 2030 and 2045 projection numbers. Um, first being the Loveland Public Library. So they have a legal service area of 77,000. 
Um, they currently have one central library at just over 57,000 square feet to serve their population. Um, it should be noted that they went for, was it Bond or Mill? It was a it was a, oh, it was a, a city overall Loveland. It was part of, because they're part of Loveland city government. So it was um, a bond through city government to build a branch. And unfortunately that failed, but they recognize that they are out of space and need increased capacity for their library services. Um, next up on the list, um, Longmont is a little bit bigger at 96,343. They also have one central library at 51,000 square feet. Boulder uh, has one central library and four branches for a total of 114,000 square feet, and they serve a legal service area of just over 100,000 um, individuals. Westminster is up next. They have a central library and um, a branch um, and they clock in at 87,000 square feet serving a legal service area of 113,537 residents. Mesa County, so we're starting to get up there in population uh, to where exceeding where we'll be in 2030. So in 2030, we're anticipated to be at 122,000 and change. So Mesa okay. County serves a population of a little bit larger. And they have one central library and seven branches. Um, interestingly enough, uh, only 69,057 square feet in total, total serviceable space. Um, still creeping up in population, Pueblo City County Library District has a legal service area of 167,000 um, and they serve that community with one central branch and seven, or one central library and seven, seven branches. Um, they have uh, a lot of square footage at 179,000 square feet. And last but not least is the Poudre River Public Library District, our neighbors just up the road. Um, their legal service area clocks in at 204,000. They have three branches currently um, for a total of 86,600 total square feet. So if you think about it, um, in 25 years, we'll be approximately at their size. And just anecdotally, um, based on conversations with their staff, um, they're feeling the crunch. Any questions on the comparables? Uh, just doing some quick math in my head. You know, if I just take branch divided by square footage on the ones that are branching, mm -hmm. they're doing about 25,000 square foot of branch, just ballparking some numbers. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you flip back and that's what it came out to be. Yeah, it's interesting when I started digging into it, um, how how each area handles their service models. No, I'm just saying it's like, it, if you go put the math doesn't It doesn't quite work because you have to include the main branch. So there there's a variable there that's a little weird, but yeah, it's bigger than 10,000. I'll give you that. Well, I'm just saying, if you like Poudre Valley here, just round that out. That's about, you know, three would be 75, but just ballpark a number there. If you go back, you know, one, you'll see you have seven branches. You have so much area. It ballparks around that plus or minus a couple 10,000. No, no, I, I hear what you're saying. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is that most of those branch systems, Poudre is the one I'm most familiar with. They have a main branch that's larger than the branches. So it, it messes with that uh, variation a little I, bit. I fully get that. But I hear you. So it's really it's really four facilities with, well, it's three. Anyway, it's three right now. But yeah, it they're not quite the same size. That said, uh, I think it's, yeah, they're all bigger than what I think we're proposing throughout our project. Yeah, I think that further emphasizes our conclusion at your, our last meeting um, where after looking at kind of our, our definitions, which were slightly different than the states and how we define different service model types, 
that we believe that we are a, a um, branch library trying to operate at a regional capacity, um, which uh, prevents or presents some friction with that. So, um, any other questions about these comparables? Anything that you're wondering about? Um, Long range planning committee folks, uh, does that scratch that itch? And I see Rochelle's waving a hand. Got a question. Um, one of the things we've been talking about in our working sessions was the possibility of perhaps an administrative mm -hmm. location to increase our workspace. Um, mm -hmm. Are any of these other districts in the state have anything similar? Off site, That's administrative? That's Hooter a great question. Does, High Plains does, which we didn't compare because High Plains is much larger. Um, there are there are some that do have administrative. Those are two that I know right off the bat. Yeah, Pooter's a great example. Across the street from this library that's pictured, that's the old main library that there's a facility that, what's it called, the Johansson House? I forget, but it's all administrative offices. They basically use that as a Hail Mary several years ago to free up administrative space in this branch or in this building to provide more patron service. It was part of a remodel they did. They out. They moved all of the technical services, their help center, which is their basically phone support and their other administrative and IT and marketing functions into uh, a house across the street from the libraries, basically to do what we were trying to do, which is to free up the administrative space and, and repurpose it for public space. And High Plains has a, a huge building on, um, Bill, what's the address of the administrative building? And they have all of their functions there. Um, it is not a public building. I think we did see a picture of that in one of the recent slide things. Now I recall, yeah. I think that's uh, 28th Street. It's just to the first street to the uh, south of Highway 34. And it's, uh, it's the former... Uh, I think it was a, a carpet uh, a dealership once upon a time. So it had wholesaling and, and uh, office space that was uh, repurposed. Two story. The facility in Fort Collins is called the Webster House. Just FYI. Was that carpet one, Bill? I, th I think it was like Dale's carpet one. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, over by where the old Kmart used to be kind of in that area. Correct. That sounds yeah, good. got it. Boot Barn's over there too, just FYI. All right, any other questions or comments before I move on? All right, well, next steps. Next week at our work session, we will be reviewing our financial projections and options. Um, we'll have a special guest from Stiffel. Uh, and then we will recap and discuss all of the options in an in entirety. So uh, at your February 25th meeting, um, we'll provide an update about uh, the happenings of the Long Range Planning Committee. And then in your March work session, I don't have it on here, but that's when we'll review the draft of the plan. So get excited, folks. <laughs> I need a little more enthusiasm. You're not as excited as I am that we have explored all the options. <laughs> I am, I for one am very excited. I will say next week, um, you may want coffee. It's gonna be a very deep financial heavy um, meeting. And for me, maybe it's just me that's going to need the coffee. But um, that one is, and, and it's going to be equally as important as anything we do. Um, that's going to be a huge, whoa. <laughs> Kendra's right. A lot of spreadsheets will be involved. So you're going to need coffee um, because it's after supper and spreadsheets kind of make all of you fall asleep except Ron Dunworth. <laughs> so um, yeah, make sure you have your coffee next week. It's gonna be it's gonna be a tough meeting, but a very important meeting. Anything else? Well, for with me? that, yep. Oh, that's it for me. Okay. Well, with that, if there's any other comments, questions, concerns. 
Okay, I count it down from 10. I adjourn this meeting. Have a great night. Thank you, everyone. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good Thanks, night. Katie. Bye.